This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Meng's Leopard 1A5, Edward's Spitfire Mark 8, Bronco's KV85, Ravel's F86D, and we take a look at D'Agostini's model space. Welcome to the new product rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly review of the latest scale models. I'm Tim Kidwell. And I'm Aaron Skinner. Now, I've made no secret of my fondness for leopards, so our initial kit today is number one with a bullet on my to-do list, Meng's Leopard 1A5. Now, this was the ultimate Leopard 1 based on the obsolete 1A1A1 tanks with the cast turret, rather than the intervening 1A3 and 1A4 tanks. Yeah, now the turret was enlarged to house additional equipment and additional ammunition, and it was wrapped in distinctive add-on armor. This release follows Meng's Leopard 1A4 from 2013 and shares many of the parts, including the hull. The combination of raised and recessed detail looks terrific here, including some weld seams, non-skid texture, handles, vents, and hatches. The fender skirts include dimpling, and there are two sets of engine covers. The running gear includes full torsion bar suspension and poly caps inside the idlers, drive sprockets, and road wheels. The working individual link tracks consist of three parts for each link that click together using a jig for alignment. Grousers can be fitted if you want. Photo etch metal is used for the engine screens and periscope covers, so this kit's a great option for anyone looking to learn the basics. The molding on small parts, like the Pioneer tools, is outstanding with very sharp clasps and bolts. The turret includes separate mounting bosses that should give the add-on armor the correct standoff. That armor is supplied in a flexible vinyl material. It's the same stuff Meng used for the add-on armor on the T90 I built recently and works very well with styrene cement. The molding for the turret basket is first rate. Very fine bars and tiny connectors. Clear parts are provided for the periscopes and some of the optics. The main gun comes in two parts with a separate muzzle. A gunfire simulator can be attached to the barrel. Optional mantlet dust covers allow the barrel to be posed at two elevations. Decals provide markings for three German Federal Armed Forces Leopards in NATO three-color camouflage. A pair of self-adhesive inserts finishes the mirrors. This is a great looking kit, so what do you think? Is this going to find its way into your leap of leopards? Absolutely. Edward released its 140A scale Mark 9 two years ago to great acclaim. Yeah, and based on unused parts in that kit, a lot of people assumed that other versions of the famous fighter were due out any time. After a couple of more Mark 9s, here's the Mark 8, and it looks just as good as its predecessors. Intended to be a major new variant of Supermarine's Thoroughbred, the Mark 8 was actually beaten into service by the interim Mark 9. But its long range served well in the Pacific, the Mediterranean, and Asia. A couple of the sprues carry over from the Mark 9 kits, including the parts for the well-appointed cockpit. That's a seat, frames, walls, pedals, and more. A set of colored photo etch metal adds the instrument panel, controls, belts, and armor. It should look good painted up underneath a crystal clear canopy. The elevators and rudders, short and tall, carry over from the Mark 9 kits, as do the main landing gear, prop, spinner, and exhausts. The new sprues include fuselage halves with the provision for a retractable tail wheel. The C-wing looks terrific with a one-piece lower setting the dihedral. Optional parts are included for the standard, clipped, and extended wingtips. The molding for the major parts is outstanding with tiny rivets and fine engraved panel lines. Decals provide markings for six aircraft. Four are Royal Air Force fighters, all wearing different camo. One day fighter, one desert, one in China, Burma, India markings, and one in high altitude interceptor markings. The other options are an American Spitfire in high altitude camouflage, and finally, an Australian fighter from the famous Grey Nurse Squadron. Now this kit will look great, built straight from the box, but Edward offers a whole host of additional parts if you want to take it up a notch. Yeah, that's right. In the brass in line, there's a cockpit set with more detailed walls and a floor and replacements for the plastic seat, controls, frames, and more. The castings look terrific with crisp details and edges. There are photo etch metal details as well. The kit doesn't include the engine, but Edward provides the power plant in resin and photo etched metal. In addition to the Merlin, the set includes everything needed to display the nose open. Plumbing, control linkages, engine mounts, firewall, frames, and resin panels. Beautiful stuff. If you prefer fabric to photo etch metal for seat belts, check out Edward's replacement belts for the Mark 8. They're beautifully printed and ready to use. If you want to show the Spitfire flaps down, look no further than this set. It provides templates to cut the molded flaps from the lower wing. 
Parts fill the space for the internal structure as well as providing the flaps themselves and the operating mechanism. Finally, for anyone wanting to open the inspection and fuel hatches, there's a set of photo etched metal covers. It includes templates to cut the plastic open and interior detail. There's even a scale thin metal replacement for the pilot door. Edward Spitfires have a reputation for fine accuracy and the Mark 8 seems to be no exception. Yeah, we really like the way the kit has everything you need for a straight ahead build in the box. But if you want to take it a step further, add an engine, detail the cockpit, Edward gives you those options as well. To counter German Tigers, the Red Army needed tanks with bigger guns. The answer was a Soviet 85mm anti-aircraft gun. Now, while the Red Army was calling for new designs, they went back and retooled old designs to mount the larger cannon. Among those was the KV heavy tank, which was uh, a new turret was designed for to, to mount the bigger gun and the hull redesigned to carry it. About 150 of them were built in late 1943. Bronco's 135th scale KV-85 shares some parts with the company's previous SU-152 assault guns. The new hull parts incorporate the full size and large turret race of the KV-85. The moldings feature weld seams, rivets, bolts, and fasteners. Beautifully molded road wheels fit separate arms. And are wrapped in individual link working tracks. A jig helps align the parts. There's a partial interior including full span torsion bars and the driver's position with seat, pedals, and controls. In the back is a decent replica of the V12 engine. The access hatch can be posed open to display it. Most of the other hatches are separate. The turret is all new for this kit and features casting texture. The 85mm cannon barrel is a masterpiece of slide molding. The gun's breech and sight as well as the coaxial machine gun are included. The seats and periscopes busy up the turret. Clear parts are included for the periscopes and light lenses. Photo etched metal provides engine screens and their frames, clasps for stowage and weapon details. Decals mark four KV-85s including a captured tank in German service. Extra turret numbers are included to model other vehicles. A bridge between the KV-1 and the late war Stalin tanks, the KV-85 is important. Bronco makes it easy for you to add one to your collection. Our fourth kit today isn't new, but it's a welcome reissue, Ravel's 148 scale F-86D. Now in addition to the nose ray dome that altered the shape of the fuselage from the F-86 that it was based on, it also had a much larger engine, and that meant a larger fuselage to house it. Designed as an all-weather interceptor, the F-86D carried a tray of 24 Mighty Mouse missiles underneath the fuselage. Initially released under the Pro Modeler label in 2001, this is still one of Ravel's best kits. In addition to some of the finest engraved lines and rivets I've seen, the kit offers terrific detail and options. The cockpit's ejection seat and frame are good, and there's detail molded on the panel and side consoles. Pilot crews the fighter with his hands on joystick and throttle. The cockpit and nose wheel bay mount on a long intake that ends with a blanking plate. At the other end, the jet pipe has a separate detail piece. The slats and flaps are molded to be deployed. The speed brakes, crew step, and canopy can be posed open or closed. Clear parts are provided for the rear view mirror, position lights, and more. The Dog Saber's Mighty Mouse missile tray can be modeled in firing position. The decals provide a full suite of stencils and markings for two colorful 1950s U.S. Air Force Squadron Commander jets. A yellow and black trimmed aircraft from the 31st Fighter Interceptor Squadron and a red trimmed aircraft marked by a shark scowl for the 75th FIS. The smooth plastic should make a perfect foundation for the natural metal finish. In his review of the F-86D in the November 2001 FSM, Randall Deek said that the kit went together beautifully with just a couple of places where he needed to do modification. He used a little filler around the wing fuselage join. All in all, this is a pretty model of a pretty aircraft. Most of you have probably heard of D'Agostini model space. Yeah, they produce large-scale models of subjects like race cars and ships, as well as other things, including a big new Millennium Falcon. The difference is, these don't come all at once. No, instead you subscribe to them, kind of like a magazine. Each month you receive a box of parts, instructions, and some information about the subject. Not only does that spread out the cost, but it also breaks the project down into easily manageable blocks. The idea intrigued us, so we thought we'd take a look at one of the kits, as well as how it arrives. D'Agostini kindly sent us this 1 8 scale McLaren Mercedes MP4323. The car that won the 2008 Formula One World Championship. 
It's big and packed with details, including cloth seat belts, posable front wheels, the steering wheel goes with them, and removable panels. They reveal the engine, suspension, and radiators. So what do these look like in the boxes? Here's a set from another Formula One car. These combine with others to build Ayrton Senna's McLaren MP44, also in 1 8 scale. The box contains packages of parts. The first has three steps and starts you on the front wing, engine, and brake and wheel assembly. The parts are beautifully pre-finished and go together with glue or screws. If aircraft are your thing, check out the 1 12th scale Spitfire Mark 5B. With wooden frames wrapped in metal skin, this kit will offer new challenges and a unique replica. These parts aren't pre-finished like the Formula One cars. Working lights are included. Well, that just about wraps it up here. Look for a review of the Leopard in an upcoming issue of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. And there's more new product information in the May issue of the magazine on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Tim Kidwell. I'm Aaron Skinner. We'll see you next time. Three, two. <laughs> I looked into the camera and I just went, shee! <laughs> <I'm>, uh, <laughs>